Coming up on this episode of the Marty Mariner Show, well, it's a little bit of a different episode for us today. This is the first of our series named From the Vault, and I cannot think of a better bloke that we could kick this off with than an interview that I did with the one and only Josh Nisbet at the conclusion of the season. Um, we caught up and had a bit of a chat about the uh, the season that had gone, uh, the importance of his family, and uh, and and obviously his his thoughts on the uh, season ahead. And some big changes were uh, just around the corner at the time. So always very interesting to go back and have a, a little bit of a listen. Um, all the best to uh, to Joshy Nisbet out there today. Uh, Playing Melbourne Victory, three o'clock kickoff at uh, at Gosford. Make sure you get out there and support the boys and get some numbers out there for Nizzy as well. He is an absolute champion both on and off the field. And uh, yeah, couldn't think of a better bloke to kick off our new series. From the vault. Hope you really enjoy it. Hope to see you out there at Gosford a little bit later on today. It's the Marty Mariner Show. Welcome back to the Marty Mariner Show. And well, this guy is pretty much as elusive off the field as he is on the field. And it's it's an absolute pleasure to have this bloke on because he's uh, just been a standout for us for uh, more than uh, more than one or two seasons. He's been an absolute legend for the club. Uh, Josh Nisbet, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. How are you going? Yeah, going good, mate. Going good. Mate, um, I did see some photos today from the uh, from the golf course. Uh, who is the best golfer in your family, and why is it you? <laughs> no, I'm not very good at all. That I don't. None of our family are any good either. So I would be up there in my family, but we're at, we're at very low standards. <laughs> the bar's very very low. I know. Um, in, in talking <laughs> to uh, your, your dad a number of times, and and a shout out to your dad. Uh, I'm a few beers in debt for him now, so he's the tightest agent that I've probably had to deal with. But um, look, I know how important family and all that is to you and then seeing, especially grand final day, seeing you walk around the field there with the, the, that, that's a special thing, right? Because it's, we talk about it being a family community club, but uh, you know, for you guys, family is just that tight, right? Yeah, it's, especially for me, my family's been the biggest supporter even when someone else doubted me, so to be in a privileged position where I can have these experiences with them, it really means a lot. And unfortunately, they're in, in and I'm in, in Central Coast, but when they do get the, the chance to visit or when things do work out, I like to make sure they feel a part of it. And yeah, they feel that it's not just my success, but also theirs too. Absolutely. And it's, and it's fantastic to see. Man, I know, I remember when you did first start and we'll talk about the academy in a sec, but but were you always going to be a professional footballer? Was that always the dream for you? Yeah, it was always the dream. I knew it was difficult and there was obviously things that were, were stopping it or putting it on delay. But, yeah, I, in my eyes, I was set on that. And, yeah, I wasn't going to let anything really stop me. Yeah. And, I mean, you made every post a winner there too. And, I mean, I mentioned the academy before, almost 50 games in the in the academy. And, and speaking to a few of the boys, it's just, uh, it's, to me, it's been just an integral part of the success of the club. Now, what were your memories like of that that time in, in academy? Was it just all building? Did it feel like something special at the time? Uh, you probably at the time, you don't think, wow, this is, in, in five years, I'm going to be with my mates winning a, an A-League Absolutely. championship. Absolutely. But we, we did feel like we were performing at a level that would get us in, a chance in the A-League. And also, we feel like we're building an environment where everyone was mates. You sort of yeah. Central Coast. You've got a few. You've got a few coasties coming in. You've got people coming from everywhere. So it's it's quite easy to bump people and have a lot of similarities with kids, especially yeah. especially kids that having moved away. In my case, away from home and living with other people, it it was pretty easy on. But yeah. I think what helped a lot is when you get to that next stage when you're in the A League and you've been in the trenches already with a fair few of them and 
yeah. you also enjoy your everyday life with them, it's pretty easy to kick on and, and have a, a fair large amount of belief in yourself. Absolutely. And I mean, I mean, you've known, I mean, you know, a number of these boys, even you, you played with even longer than that, but, but, but when you, when you first started, were you, were you always in that central midfield role or is that something that you found? Nah. So when I was younger, I was playing more, a bit more just behind a strike, a bit of a position. And then, yeah, I'm about, I think in the under twenties, I sort of went for a bit of a dry spell, not, not scoring or anything like that. So they yeah. dropped me a bit deeper, and yeah, I think it, it sort of suits my game a bit more, getting a bit more stuck in rather than that little bit of X factor, which, which I do believe I can do. But it's That's I do right. like being a bit more involved in the game rather than getting the ball a little bit less. Absolutely, and and, and do you think that's still underestimated in your game because? The, the amount of stuff that you create out there, I think a lot of it does go unnoticed. We see you battling away there in the middle of the park, but you, you have been quite creative and set up a lot of, um, you know, attacky movement this year. Yeah, look, I do maybe think I'm undervalued in that area, but I also think I can give more and do more that can sort of cross that off people's mark. I think I've got the, the end product on paper where people are thinking it's not a matter of, can he do what he is doing it type of thing then then there is no say whether whether I can do it or not I'm actually doing it absolutely and and I mean I don't know if you're oh I know you probably do remember your first game I think was a was it an FFA Cup game against Adelaide do you do you remember much from that day yeah I remember I don't know I remember thinking I was in the squad and not sure what was happening but in the week it looked like I was starting and then making the starting lineup and I remember. I didn't have a very good game at all. I remember getting hooked off at half time. And I was yeah, in my in my opinion I was very bad, but I think just the excitement of playing sort of yeah shadowed that in my mind. Yeah. And and is that I mean, we've talked to a few of the boys who are notoriously nervous before games. Is that still something that you go with if you do you get worried if you're not nervous before a game? No, nah, so a few probably the first year I I got very nervous. I thought yeah. I've got to play well this game, I've got to play well that game, but yeah. Now I'm pretty comfortable. I like I, I feel like I'm confident in my ability, but also every even every just every person's going to have their their bad day, no matter what they do. You, yeah. you try to do the right things; it's not going to work out. So as long as I, well, one of Monty's favorite things is you can have a bad day off the ball. So it's yeah. sort of something I think is a great, great uh, saying for everyone trying to trying to become professionals and even professionals just to, even if it's not your day, just keep working hard and go for it. Absolutely. That's something, something you definitely do in spades, mate. And, and it's something that crept up on me when I was having, a, you're almost at a hundred games now in the, in the senior, in the, in the A-League. Is that, is that something that came up real quick and quicker than you thought? Or is it to you? Yeah. It feels like a hundred games almost. Uh, I feel like it's come pretty quick. I, you see it around the league, people that have played 50 games or hundred games and you thought, Oh, I didn't, Realize that they played that many, and yeah, it's sort of the same thing for me. I, I, last year, I thought, oh, I just hit fifty, and now I'm not too far off. Or so, pretty, pretty, pretty big achievement. I mean, you know, we sort of look at the players that have sort of reached that milestone for the club. It's a, it's a hell of a, a level to get to. We, um, we spoke to uh, to Max Ballard um, a week or so ago, and uh, he, uh, he gave you a hell of a rap, and uh, he says he does all the work for you just to let you do all the fancy mm-hmm. stuff. I mean. You know, we, we can't let him get away with that, surely. <laughs> to be fair, he, he, does, he does a lot and, yeah, he's a funny bloke. Yeah, oh, that's, that's, that's a couple of things that we'll call him. Yeah, I mean, the, the partnership <laughs> that you guys have struck up because, I mean, during the season, often you guys are up against three-man midfields in the middle there and you guys just seem to work so well. And, I mean, we'll count Harry Steele when he comes on as well and, and, and covers uh, the middle of the park. It just seems to have been a partnership that's flourished for you this year. Yeah, look, it's it's been good. It's when you get along with someone so well off the pitch, it's pretty easy to get along with them on the pitch. And yeah, Maxie, Maxie it's a great player, and we always knew we'd be up against it. And it's something maybe we wouldn't thrive on, but you're happy for the challenge. And you know, if if you do well in a three v three midfield, it's like oh well. But if you're doing well in a two v three midfield, you're thinking wow, like they're really doing it. And I think that's helped us a lot being getting sort of a bit more a light on Maxi, especially seeing that we're outnumbered and he's still performing and we're still performing. And when Steely comes off the bench, he's yeah. he's doing exactly what 
we were doing before and yeah, and filling the boots perfectly. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, the season like we've just had hasn't it hasn't always been the case at the Mariners, does it? It, at their times now, the attacking talent that we had, but I mean, particularly this year, that's just running around. It must feel just so good sometimes picking up the ball and just having these choices of, you know, which which attacking player to get it to. Yeah, exactly right. When the when the attacking boys are doing their job, it's all, all you all I need to do all I actually need to do is just get the ball and give it to them and, and just sort of sit behind and yeah. and let them do what they need to do. And yeah, and for this season, especially sort of the back half. That they were doing that really well, especially Marco Tulli. He was on fire. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, I've I've never heard cheers like it. I mean, I don't know out of anyone else when when you go to to have a shot. There's so many people just want you to put it in the back of the net, mate. It's just unbelievable. Like, yeah, you know, all the people before the game, even pre grand final, it was they could make my day and Nizzy score a goal. That would be just fantastic. And <laughs> do you feel that as pressure as part of your game as something that you just want to keep pushing at to to get a few more in the back of the net or is it just, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing? Yeah, so like, I'll, I want to keep doing what I'm doing. I think more importantly, the performance, whether it's a, a goal or assist is the most important thing to me, making sure that I do my part for the team and, and play well. And yeah. But yeah, I think to get, maybe to get to the next level, even step up my game was to do that and, and get the five goals for the assist or get a few, a fair few more goal contributions where, yeah. There's not much you can uh, you can't argue that I can't do if that makes sense. Yeah, and uh, I mean as we'll, we'll talk obviously talk, cover about the uh, grand final very shortly, but does it still feel like it's celebration time, or are you starting to dread that Bryce is going to be getting you running around an oval very very soon? <laughs> no, Bryce was pretty good. He he didn't have us doing yo-yo, and then he got his game. But um, yeah. yeah, no, there's still a bit of a still a bit of a buzz, and a few of the boys are getting a, getting tattooed. They're with the oh, palm trees and the, with the, the toilet seat. So, no, nah, there's definitely still a buzz, especially when you see people that haven't yet congratulated you. You get reminded that you're A-League champions. And, yeah. yeah, it's nice to know that you – I think other than Melbourne City supporters, we had every other neutral on our side. So, pretty it's pretty nice to, to know that. Oh, absolutely, mate. And I'm, I'm glad to hear the tattoos are gone. I'm surprised there's no sauce bottles going, mate. Surely someone's got to go to the big bubble. <laughs> That's, that's got to be happening. Oh, maybe Jace can do that. but <laughs> <laughs> If there's going to be one, well, I think he's over in Japan yeah. at the moment. God knows he's got, traveling all over the joint. But um, let, let's just, <laughs> just cover off on the, the season on, on the park. Did you feel, I, I felt that we really gained momentum the back half of the year, I think maybe from, you know, we had results here or there, but we always seem to be moving forward. Is that how it felt for you guys too, that despite a few results, but the journey was still going forward, we were still improving? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Like our objective was still to keep doing well and performing and make sure we get results. But there was definitely a stage where we thought, like, come on, boys, we like pull pull yourselves out of it. Like we gotta. It's not about performing well or, or getting lucky. It's a matter of actually getting getting the result now. And yeah. I think there was sort of, I feel like the moment might have been Brisbane at home where I think yeah. the finals run. We we yeah we did exactly that. But it was definitely the talk of. We know we're good enough, but knowing we've got knowing we're good enough is is enough anymore. We've got to make sure we we show that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I mean, and I, again, I think I've said nearly on every episode that that the last game of the, the the season proper in Adelaide, where we got the win, I to me that performance pre semi was, was probably the best I'd seen us play for for a long, long time. I, and to be honest, I, I think that just set us up for the, the final series. It must have felt good going there, getting that result in Adelaide and just coming away with it. That that must have given us a lot of confidence. Yeah, we, we went in that game knowing a, a win would be set, most likely second and most likely an Asian Asian Cup qualification. But we like we sort of said to ourselves, let's not put any doubt on it and go out and give it a win. Yeah. Thankfully, on the day, everyone everyone did that, and yeah, to for a team that's coming second and then just before the finals to to beat them four one, it sort of it doesn't give you a bit of it doesn't give you arrogance, but definitely self of uh, a fair bit of confidence, knowing this is what we're capable of, and and then shy of that isn't good enough. And, and and do you think too that playing the the semi final same venue just pretty much straight after was it was a good thing straight after that result? It was kind of like a, let's just keep it going. Hundred hundred percent. I think 
if we did that, if we had that result earlier or something, and then we're waiting two, three, four weeks, you kind of forget about that maybe the buzz you had of that game or yeah. the the way the fans felt. Where you, you knew it was the last game you played. This is this is what we did. This is how we did it. So yeah, I think thankfully the way it was set up, it worked out perfect for us that we the confidence from the previous result. Yeah. And it was direct relation to the game we're about to play, so it gave us a lot of confidence. Absolutely, and and then of course we came we come back to Gosford, twenty thousand and fifty nine people fill in the stadium. Um, I, I say it repeatedly, and maybe I'm totally biased, but a, a packed out, um, you know, industry group stadium is is one of the best sites there is in Australian football. Yeah. It's just the atmosphere is electric. You must, I know, I was speaking to a few of the boys, they felt it in the warm up, but coming out of that tunnel. They get those flame machines going, which was great because it was bloody freezing that night. But it must have <laughs> felt, you must have, I've said to a few of the boys, you must have felt it, the atmosphere before you saw it, right? Yeah, 100%. I, I agree with the warm up thing. Sort of when you warm up on a normal match day, it's sort of, yeah. you probably you got about 30% of people in there who's coming. Yeah. And because it was so packed, it already felt like the game, the normal game was about oh, to kick yeah. off. And we, we just, we're about, we're about to do up. So when we get out there and we can sort of, we're in the tunnel, we can sort of hear the commentator, like the announcer talking and yeah. the music about to play. You can hear cheers already before we're coming out. And I think, yeah. yeah, just the crowd before we even kicked off was electric and, and confidence boosting. And yeah, we, we took that into that game. Oh, absolutely. And as I said, I mean, you know, I said to a number of people, you know, being there since year one, we've had those attendances of, 1500 2000 and it's just like you know a bait to yourself kind of thing but to to, to see that place is packed and i don't know the membership drives are um uh, are going as we speak it's all kicked off and seeing your face all over the place mate very much the poster boy <laughs> at the moment is that is modeling the next part of your career mate or are you going to just stick to football well, i'll stick to football i might do a bit of radio modeling but that's about it <laughs> Well, you're more, more than welcome to join us on any time, that's for sure, mate. Um, so after that game, now, one thing that I sort of, I know there was excitement after the game, lots of cheering. I mean, the crowd stuck around. But in talking to a lot of you guys afterwards, there was still very much, we still got a game to play. There was very much this, we're happy, we're, we're here. But even straight after the game, no one was getting carried away with themselves. There was still that, we got a job to do. Is that something that you guys spoke about? Was it just a natural thing that you felt after the game? Uh, I I think it might have been a natural thing because uh, ambitions at the start of the year was to to win it all. So I think yeah. when we got ourselves one step away, sort of why why sort of take your eye off it? Why yeah. why not put all of it and concentrate on it all? So I think yeah, we're definitely excited about the win and yeah, definitely buzzing about it. But I think everyone's objective still was this is not what we this is not what our goal was. Our goal was to win it all. Exactly, and I know. I know you guys went up and, and stayed in, you know, Parramatta, you know, the, the game or a day or two before the game. Did you sleep well? Is it one of those things that I just didn't sleep for two, three days? Because I know that was probably my story. I didn't really sleep before the game. How, how was it for <laughs> you guys? It was, was it just the build up or was it, no, we're, we're all, we've got this under control? Nah, to be fair, it didn't, it wasn't, it felt like a normal game, but I think the buzz and vibe off everyone was, it was pretty casual, like, it's, this is what we've sort of been training for, playing for. Yeah. Why, why think of it anything more? So, when you're chilling at the hotel and it, yeah, you still sort of get the same vibes if you're away on a normal match day. And yeah. I think that really helps for us. We're quite a, a young, a young team. So, if we had people stressing and the vibe is, is sort of going differently, yeah. I'm not sure how we would have reacted. So the yeah. fact that it stayed the same and, yeah. and yeah, it made people feel comfortable even if they were nervous. Yeah, I think it was a real positive for us. Yeah. And the, and the start of the game too. I mean, the atmosphere was fantastic. Well and truly, the numbers there in our favour in the, in the stands as well. The yellow army were making their noise, and 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 fans who probably hadn't been to a game for a while, we were packed in there as well. And yeah, the, the noise was just incredible. It the, the occasion was big, and, and we stood up to it. Just again, walking out into that sort of environment was it. This is ours. We're just not going to let this one go. Yeah, I think unfortunately in Melbourne City's favour, uh, we sort of got all the advantages they were technically meant to get based on what we've all heard. But I'm yeah. not, I'm not complaining. But Absolutely. yeah, you you know when 
three quarters of the crowd is cheering for the Mariners, and you've got one yeah. small section for City, and yeah. half half a thing you do all right is getting cheered and, and celebrated. It's sort of you, you kind of feel like it's going to be a good day regardless, if that makes yeah. sense. Whether you play well or not, you know, it's going to be an enjoyable. And I remember when we scored, I think, the fifth goal, yep. I believe. it was like, And then the fans started singing, we are champions, yep. like 86 minutes. I remember just stopping still for a second yep. and having a look around. I remember thinking about 90% of this stadium's absolutely singing that. It got a bit of goosebumps during the, during the oh, game absolutely. about that. Yeah, I mean, I, was I remember sitting down, second, looking around. I, I was going to say that, in the, especially in the set, because half time, I mean, it's 2 1, it's still anybody's game. They came out and, you know, full on 15, 20 minutes, second half, it was a battle. But 3 1, 4 1, fight, to, to me personally, it just felt surreal. It was almost like you don't win grand finals 5 6 1. Like, what's, what's going on with this? But it allowed you guys to, I guess, near the end of the game, just to go, wow, just check this out. It wasn't like it was, it was close at that stage. It gave you that opportunity, right? Yeah, I think when it was 2-1, like the, all the fans were cheering, but there was still that little bit of maybe not nervousness, but worry if they get one back. And then when it got 3-1, there was still a bit of tension. Yeah. And then 4-1, it sort of calmed it a little bit, but it was still yeah. like, don't let them get one. So when we got the fifth one, everyone went berserk and the crowd was going crazy. It sort of, I think at that moment when I was singing, it was sort of like a realization. Yeah. We all know we've done this. Yeah. We all know we've we're grand final. We're champions. Absolutely, and we and we all know, you know, Monty very much, you know, straight line, hard edge, coach to the. When do you think he thought we'd won the game, or did he? Was he like six one? There's still two minutes to go. We've got to play this one out. What do you reckon he would have been like? Uh, I think he'll tell us that he was six one. We sort of get more, but <laughs> I think maybe. I, I I think when the fifth one went in as well, that's sort of that's when I had the feel, feeling yeah we've done this. Yeah. I think on the fourth goal there was still that you still thought we've done this, but you can't switch off. But yeah, yeah when the fifth goal went in, I reckon that's when he, he calmed down and yeah, I, and you could see sort of the people behind him. They all start they 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 start gathering even when it's only five one and four one. So yeah. I think they already believed it too. Oh, that's sensational! And of course, as, as I mentioned at the start, like after the game. Um, I saw you come over to to grab your the, the family li- little Niz on the back of the shirt. That was awesome as well. And it, it just must be. I mean, we mentioned at the start about family, but to be able to involve them, like even when we're lifting the trophy, the families are there. The staff. It's just it just typifies what this club is about, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does. It shows that we all understand and know that. We're not just making ourselves proud, and we're not just accomplishing things by ourselves. It's everyone who's ever had part in our life, and yeah. and the the joy and excitement and feeling we get is shared amongst not just the players but the families, and then not just the families, the fans. And yeah. I think everyone sort of believes that we are we are united and that we are we're family. And I think that's it's definitely true. I think it. It goes from the fans down through the club, down through us. And yeah, I think there's not many, there's not anyone in that team who probably wouldn't put their body on the line for anyone, anyone, anyone else, really. Absolutely. And totally. And the, and the depth we had off the bench, I've said that a few times too. You know, everyone who came on just played their part. And, and you know, it was just a total, you know, group effort from, uh, as you said, players, staff, supporters, the whole lot. Um, Got to ask you too, have you ever, you know, run into Graham Arnold's car or done something bad to the guy to not get any more green and gold shirts? Because I know, I think you played, was it three, was it three times in the under 23s, I think from memory? Um, what, what's going on? Because to me, you're one of the first guys picked and I just never seem, it never seems to happen. <laughs> what's going on with that, mate? Oh, look, I think especially one of the, one of the more depth positions is in the midfield, probably midfield and centre backs, to be honest. But uh, look, I'm I'm just playing footy, and if it works out, it works out. But, but yeah, it's definitely an ambition of mine, and I'm going to keep pushing for it. Absolutely. And yeah, I'm not. I'm going to keep making sure that uh, I get the, the get the course to get me here, or, yeah. or making sure that there's at least pressure on his door to make the decision. I think. Exactly. Uh, you get a bit of hype around you and it, it's hard to say no so I just need to keep building on that and yeah giving him no reason to say he shouldn't be in it 
Absolutely. A very a very diplomatic and solid answer, Josh. Lee, but fantastic <laughs> job, mate. Well, well done with that. <laughs> um, and finally, mate, I mean, we would we would love to see you playing for the Mariners for the next 20, 25 years. You know, Sean, get the checkbook out, do what you've got to do. But in your heart, and I know how much you love the Mariners and that, but is there a desire to go overseas? I mean, we know Nick Dar's just headed over to Sunderland um, as an example. Is that is that something that is something that's burning away a little bit? Uh, a little bit. Like I see a lot of players that are coming through the Mariners are getting opportunities overseas and getting transfers. And yep. yeah, like I would, I personally would love to put myself in a challenge overseas, not necessarily, not necessarily in the A League because yeah. oh, we wouldn't I let think, that happen, mate. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think once I I get my opportunity in Europe, I think it would be easier to keep progressing. I just kind of. Uh, need that opportunity to the first opportunity sort of thing you get your first job you need everyone says where's your work experience i just need that first job to to sort of do that but yeah. look i have i do have ambitions to go to to europe especially and, and try and challenge myself and and do well and honestly challenge my lifestyle to learn a new language be somewhere where i, I probably wouldn't experience without without football so yeah. yeah i would love to do that if i got the opportunity but Absolutely. i'm a mariner in the a league Absolutely, mate. And uh, we won't let you go without a struggle, but I know we would wish you well. Should that time come and probably 10 years down the track, we'll reconsider that sort of thing going on. So, that's <laughs> Mate, uh, thanks heaps for uh, for spending some time with us today. It's been uh, an absolute pleasure chatting to you. Um, all the best in enjoying the rest of uh, the off-season. Um, I'm chatting to Bryce very soon, mate, so I'll send you through what the, the regime's going to be so you can start working on the pre-season <laughs> and uh, get, getting into that, mate. But... Uh, all the best for it, and we'll uh, we'll catch up with you again in the off season. No, I appreciate you having me on, and thank you everyone. No worries, mate. Take care.